Hey guys, it's Katie, and I'm here today to do a review of Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. I loved this book. I can't express how much I loved this book, but we'll get into it in a minute. So for those of you who haven't read this book, this book follows the events of a city of gods, basically, that collapsed 10 years prior to the events of this book. And there has a plague has come over the city as well as the surrounding cities, but particularly in Arlan. Ar Arlan? I don't even know. Just kind of following what happens to that. So there are three main characters in this book. There's Raiden, who is the Prince of Arlon. There we go. There's Princess Serene. She's, as I said, a Princess of Teod, and she's engaged to be married to Raiden. And then there's Hrathen, who is a high priest of Fjordal. And he wants to convert people to his religion, because why not? So basically, the events of this book follow what happens when Serene comes to Arlon and realizes and is told that her betrothed, who is actually now her husband, has died. And kind of what happens after that. The majority of the events in this book take place in Arlon. And uh, Hrathen, as I said, is also there in Arlon because he wants to convert people to his religion. Because, as I said, why not? Um, and that brings me to another really interesting point. Because a lot of the things in this book follow things that actually or are based on things that actually kind of happen in history because converting a religion was a big thing in the Middle Ages. And so I liked seeing how that was reflected because Hrathen is trying to convert people from paganism and another god, singular god's religion to his singular god religion and it's causing a lot of tension and a large por portion of the book deals with politics and religion which is really interesting but then another part of this book follows um, the idea of that plague coming through and taking people and then they think that they're dead or they don't actually know much about people called the Elantrians they know a little bit and they're kind of afraid of them but it's very reminiscent in a lot of ways to the Black Plague especially when they describe how the victims of this Sheod is what they call it look like um, and kind of the things that they sort of experience so that was really cool for me to see because and this is gonna sound super weird I love and I'm fascinated by everything the Black Plague. So just getting to see things like that put in this book was really cool. And then finally also getting to explore a little bit about the class system. It's very very small but there were there was a, a lot poverty was discussed a lot in this book in relation to both Elantrians and people in the surrounding cities. But there was also the, just the talk of um, the idea of like fealty to lords and dukes and the king and religions and all this kind of stuff. And so it was just very reminiscent of like high to late Middle Ages mostly. Mostly. Anyway, that's just like my nerd side coming out. But let me just tell you. The world building in this book was some of the best I have ever seen. And I've read a lot of fantasy or sci-fi and things like that. But the world building in this book was a phenomenal. And if I had to rate the world building, I would for sure 100% give it a 5 out of 5 stars. With the characters briefly, I really liked all of the characters in, at different points. There were some times I was more interested in 
some characters versus others. I've experienced that a lot before in books, especially with shifting POVs. I, as I said, I loved my favorite character that was probably Serene. It's, she was such a cool, badass female character. She gave no shits and she was really witty and clever and cunning and just, she knew how to take people down and it just was a great thing to watch. With a close second being Rayadin. I really liked Rayadin. He was very, he wasn't what you were expecting him to be, but he was very much a unifier. So when he was alive and in Arlon, he was well loved and well liked by all of his people and consorts, except for his father. Um, but he, even when he went to Elantris, he was very much the same and He's kind of the key to this book. He's probably, arguably, the main protagonist of the book, but it could be argued that Serene is as well. And then finally, Hrathen. I waffled a bit on him back and forth, but that's because he's a complex villain, kind of. He's one of those tormented characters, sort of like a Severus Snape, where it's like, you hate him at first, and then you find a little bit out more about his background or his life story, and then you start to feel a little bit more sympathetic towards him, even though he's done some really terrible things. Hrathen is very, very much the same kind of character for me. Um, I really liked his role at the end of the book. It had a bit of a wild twist that was incredibly unexpected. Um, that I really kind of liked um, and so that was kind of really wild and then there were a lot of side characters that I really 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 enjoyed um, like the there are these creatures if you want to call them that these sentient sort of AI being things I don't really it's really unclear as to what exactly they are except for these like floating orb things that are able to think and understand things are called seans, seans. and um, I really liked Princess Serene's Seon. Her name was Ash. She just was such a great comedic foil for Serene's antics and Elantris. I loved Galadon. He is a doula, which is another person, basically, from a different part of the world. And he's just, he's so dry and funny and very realistic, but it comes off as in a comedic way. But he always uses this word, which I, you pick up on the meaning of when you read, because he likes to insert the use of different languages throughout, which is Kolo. And as someone who is Eastern European and Serbian, basically that's a dance in Serbia and it's spelled the same way. So it's like a little random aside thing. Um, I also really liked the use because there's seons and then there's what's called aeons. And aeons are these all of the characters' names are based on aeons, which are, it has a glossary in the back of the book telling you what most of them mean. Um, but they are basically what tie the world together, and you find out a lot more about them as the world goes on. I really also liked a lot of the dukes. They were, they were, they were very reminiscent of kind of a, a little bit of a Knights of the Round Table kind of thing. They're very much part of a rebellion against the society that they are not quite sure how they feel about. And uh, I don't know, there, there was just a lot packed into a 622 page book. And it was just really good. It was really good. I mean, however, one thing that I did take issue with was literally in like the last 10 chapters. There was some things, some things felt very rushed and I was a little bit confused as to how things happened in them and it was just a little bit disjunct 
and it could have been handled a little bit better, I think, but it didn't detract from my enjoyment of the book really at all. So I ended up giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The use of the languages and just getting to know the different cultures in different ways and the characters were fleshed out really well and th it's just the world building just really did it for me. And I'm definitely planning on reading some other Sanderson books in the future. I know that there are a lot of them. I know that I sh will probably and everyone will probably tell me to start with Mistborn. So that's probably what I'm going to be doing first. He actually had an excerpt from it in the back of the book. And it seemed intriguing enough, but I was also really tired when I was reading it, so I was like, I want to literally just kind of get a flavor for what Mistborn is about. But it, it seems similar but different. I don't know, I've heard phenomenal things about it from people who've read it, so yeah, that's probably going to be down the road. I'm really glad I read this. I flew through it, and it was a great fantasy read to pick up during school because I wasn't like super emotionally invested in everything but I wanted to get back to it and pick it up so it wasn't like I'm gonna rip your heart out and stomp on it and you're gonna be sobbing for days loved this book I feel like I have a lot more I could say about it but that I should probably just leave this review here for now so if you guys have read it Feel free to come talk to me down about it down in the comments or on social media. As you know, I have a Twitter and a Goodreads. And uh, as always, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, and I will come back with another video for you guys again soon. Okay, bye.